Hi, Apple support. I'd like to return the iPad mini. Why is that? Well, let's, let's talk. Let's talk about the iPad mini because, oh man, this is an annoying video for me to make. So what are you waiting for? If you're excited for today's video, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me and the channel out and click that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so that you never miss a beat. I was so excited to get this product. This is a $499 tablet with a new design that Apple just announced. And the hardware here, the design, the cameras, it is all wonderful. Apple's adopted this new iPad Air-like flat edge design that feels so good in the hand, it doesn't even come close to anything else. It's got just the perfect weight to it, and the new design is even more heavily complemented by the fact that USB-C is finally on here. I mean, this is something that I believe Apple should put on every single one of their products. I believe it is the most consumer-friendly, and I'm still disappointed to this day that we don't have and will never get USB-C on the iPhone. It was wonderful the other day when this was running out of charge to just plug in my MacBook charger, which is also my iPad Pro charger, just a simple USB-C cable into the bottom of here. And I was like, wait, why is this not on every Apple product? It's just simply better. But even more impressive to me than USB-C is the new ultra wide front facing camera system with center stage on here. When you're in video calls, it will always keep you in frame because it's got this, I think, 100 plus degree field of view. It is simply the most fun and the most creative I've ever been able to be with an iPad camera. And Apple can be like, you can shoot movies on here and it does 4K. I don't care about the back camera on an iPad whatsoever. It's the front camera that I use and they just nailed it this year. In fact, the only piece of hardware here that they didn't nail is the screen. It's got this weird jelly scroll issue, which by the way, to be clear, can happen on every 60 hertz display on any product from any company. The problem with the iPad mini screen is it's more noticeable on the iPad mini screen that is LCD, that is 60 hertz refresh rate than any other display I have ever used. In fact, just minutes after I took it out of the box, I was working on an iPhone 13 video and I was really excited to use this. So I opened up my notes app and started working on um, all my hidden features uh, and I was typing them pretty much all up on here. And I was like, oh, this feels weird. The scrolling feels off or something when I'm going up and down a web page." And sure enough, I was right. Dieter Bonn of The Verge was the first to notice this and then Ars Technica also followed up and said they they noticed it was an issue and everyone was like, well, what's up with this? Like this is a $500 tablet. It probably shouldn't have this issue, right? And then uh, Apple came out today to Ars Technica and said, no, that's that's the feature, That that's it. That's what it's supposed to be. I mean, obviously when you're using slow-mo, it's incredibly noticeable here, but uh, even with the human eye right now, as I'm recording this, I can see that the screen looks a little weird and it's only when you're scrolling. If you're looking at something static, the screen is great. If you're consuming content or if you're using the iPad mini in landscape mode whatsoever, you do not see it. It looks completely normal to me in landscape. Like it looks phenomenal when you're scrolling and stuff. It's just in portrait mode. You know, for an iPad pro, like that'd be sort of fine because it's becoming more and more of a landscape device, but nobody's gonna hold their iPad mini like this. It's so small and it fits in your hand perfectly like this. So I'm just frustrated that the main use mode is where I notice it the most. But to me, it's still a really good looking LCD panel and you know, it's 60 Hertz like Apple's other cheaper iPads. Um, it's still a good screen. At the end of the day, even with Jelly Scroll, it's still a good screen. It's just something I wanted to make clear that I have noticed. No guys, in fact, the uh, Jelly Scroll, it pales in comparison to my issues with iPad OS. And really at this point, the only fair analogy I have for iPad OS is that kid that just doesn't get it through his head that he's gonna fail and drop out of school if he doesn't get his act together. He's failed every test, he's not doing his homework, and then Monday comes around, he knew he had a quiz, and he still didn't prepare for it whatsoever and failed yet again despite everybody at the school trying to help him. And and that's what iPad OS is. Everyone who cares about the iPad has told Apple, this is a problem we want to see better. I mean, this is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. You guys know how critical I've been of this product, but uh, this is a shining star. iPad OS being not that powerful on the iPad Pro is incredible compared to the mess that they have crammed onto this 8.3 inch display. In fact, if you actually compare iPad OS 15 on the iPad mini to iPad OS on the iPad Pro, you're gonna notice a lot of similarities, but similarities in the worst way possible. When you look at the home screen, it goes five icons across and four icons across when you've got widgets, and that is the same. You've got all the space on the iPad Pro, which it looks all right on, although I'm not a huge fan of, but what has Apple done on the mini? They just crammed it all together. There you go, same exact 
compact display, smaller icons, barely tappable touch targets, we're gonna put that right on the iPad mini. You'll see the same thing in apps, whether it's the App Store or Safari or Mail or Twitter, everything just feels so tiny. And I get it, this is an iPad mini. I'm not asking for everything to be blown up. I'm asking for it to be optimized. Nothing feels properly sized on this iPad mini. It feels too small to the point where it is hard to like actually tap what you want it sometimes. And even Apple's own applications, they don't feel right. They literally feel like Apple took the iPad Pro and scaled it down with no thought about user experience. And not to mention you can make the dock this small on here, I mean, I can tap it, but barely. And you might say, all right, well, don't worry. Apple has included an option in settings to make things better. Yeah, you get a home screen, you use large app icons, and the app icons here are incredible. So I'm like, oh, it probably scaled up the entire interface. Just like Apple has regular or zoom mode on any iPhone that you buy, where you can blow everything up a little bit, I assume that on the iPad, it'd be the same concept. Apple has something that was made for a larger iPhone, but on a smaller iPhone, maybe you want bigger touch targets. Nope, not at all. Every app you use is simply scaled down from the iPad pad and it genuinely feels like a $150 software or maybe $200 software running on a $500 device. It's unlike anything I've ever seen from Apple, a company that traditionally nails hardware and software. I continue to be literally bewildered and amazed at how they bork this so badly year after year. I mean, they've got the best people in the world working there. And it just seems like nobody cares about the iPad. They even, they reinvented the iPad mini. They brought it back to life after really not updating the design at all for like seven years. And the software still feels like it did back in the day, but worse somehow. They've made it worse with iPadOS. In summary, I still have current issues with iPadOS on the iPad Pro and iPadOS on the new iPad mini, but it's for entirely different reasons. On the iPad Pro, it looks great and everything is spaced properly and it feels incredibly optimized for the larger screened iPads, even the 10.2 inch one. It's on the iPad Pro specifically that Apple calls it Pro when I don't think there are any Pro features really in iPadOS and if there are, they essentially work across the entire line. So what does the iPad Pro actually bring to the table for pros? The answer is not that much. So you would think that bringing iPad OS to a non-pro device would be just about perfect. And while that is true on the iPad Air or even the 10.2 inch iPad, it feels wrong on the iPad mini. It feels like Apple didn't care. They just threw it on here because they were busy working on something else. It genuinely feels lazy. It feels like Apple didn't care. And that's something that I never get from their products. But on this iPad mini specifically, it's like it was an afterthought. It's like nobody really tested it out. And it's this when I've wanted to use this to take notes for videos or even read like sponsor ad reads on here that everything is too small. I'm constantly having to zoom and blow it up because, and no, it's not because I wear glasses. It's because I have no issue on any other iPad. It's just on this iPad mini. There is something wrong with the scaling and with no current option to make the scaling better, I can't recommend this product to myself, first of all, but also to many of you. But let me be clear here. If Apple adds a scaling mode, if they improve the software and the touch targets and make it actually optimized for the iPad mini, I can recommend this device. But right now, I just don't like it. It doesn't feel like an iPad should. It just feels cheap. And I attribute that predominantly to the software. I mean, maybe the jelly scroll adds a little bit to that, but it's like 80% software is my issue here. So that's why I'm returning the iPad mini and I hope that Apple fixes things in the future, but it's not fixed now and the product's out now. So that's why I'm returning it. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you make a purchase choice. Uh, yeah, that's the iPad mini. All right, love you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.